John chapter 1 verse 1 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is before Genesis chapter 1. Jesus Christ already existed. That is to say, He had no beginning. He was the personal presence of God, and He is the conception of God as infinite, eternal, perfect, and almighty. 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Jesus Christ was in the beginning, and He was the presence of God. 3. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The infinite detail of creation came into being through Jesus Christ. That means everything we can see in this world and everything we can't see that is in the supernatural world. Apart from Him, not even one thing would have come into being. He created all these things for His children, for you. And for me, we get victory in this flesh life by following and obeying the one who created all things. 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus Christ is the fountain of eternal life. He was the tree of life in the garden. He is not a light. He is the light. In Genesis 1-3, if we have darkness in our life, when confusion and chaos creep in and our life seems to unravel, Jesus Christ is the light that we should follow. He loves us. He calls us. And in Him, we can find peace of mind in a miserable world. 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The word shineth is phaino, and this is where we get the word phenomenon, meaning Jesus Christ in the supernatural world before Genesis presented himself in this darkness. The word comprehended is catalambano, which means to seize or to overtake. So what darkness are we talking about here that did not overtake Christ in the supernatural world before Genesis? This darkness is the darkness that happened when Lucifer and many others rebelled against the Lord. They did not overtake the Lord in that rebellion. 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is John the Baptist. The word sent is apostello, which is where we get the word apostle. The word from is para, and it means in the presence of or from beside, meaning John, just like the rest of us, was in the presence of God, in the supernatural realm, before he sent us down here to inhabit this flesh body. John was sent down here for a very specific reason. He was to pave the way for Jesus Christ. John knew his reason for being sent down here. Do you know what reason God sent you down here? Are you serving your purpose for being here? Or are you wasting your purpose away, being distracted by the pleasures of the flesh? 7. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. John the Baptist was sent ahead of Christ so he could prepare God's people 
during that time. The ones who read and study God's word were prepared for a man to prepare the way ahead of Christ. The religious leaders were not prepared. 8. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. John was not the Christ. He was sent to bear a witness that the promised seed of Eve was walking on the earth. 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Jesus Christ was and is the true light of this physical world. The light of our Lord shines on all people, in all nations, and to all races. The light shines on every man without distinction, just as the sun shines on us all, giving all of us the opportunity to believe in our Creator. 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. God himself was walking around in the world and among the people he had created, and the majority of the people in the world did not recognize who he was, and still today millions of people do not believe that Jesus Christ is God and that Jesus Christ is our Creator. Step 1. If you call yourself a follower of Christ, you must know who you are following. The one true God. 11. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. God Himself was in the flesh, among the very souls that he had created, and they did not accept him. 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The word sons here means children. Any human being on this earth can believe and accept Jesus Christ and authority will be given for that human being to become a child of God. And if we listen to him through his word, he can use us for his purpose. We will be counted worthy to receive his great and precious promises. We will become partakers of divine nature and with God's spirit leading and guiding us through this life we will be able to escape the corruption that is all around us in this world. 13. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We were not begotten of flesh and blood. We all came from God in the supernatural world. We are all born from above, as all souls must pass through this physical world. The fallen angels chose not to be born from above, and instead of being born of woman, they chose to seduce woman. Which means, if you are in a flesh body, you are not a fallen angel. The fallen angels have no chance for salvation. We do. 14. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word was made flesh. God Himself was made flesh, born into a human body, showing us how to get it done while we are in the flesh. He didn't ask us to do something that he wasn't willing to do himself. God's spirit was born into a human body. 
Jesus Christ. He is abounding in divine revelation. 15. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. John the Baptist cried aloud, preaching and teaching God's word that God himself was among us in the flesh. Christ was born after John, and his ministry started after John's. But Christ was before John, because Christ was God. Christ was before all things. 16. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. If we accept and believe Jesus Christ and his word, we can receive his blessings, undeserved favor, right next to undeserved favor, over and over again and again. We don't deserve it, and even though we might mess up over and over, again and again, as long as we repent and continue to try to do what is good and right, God will bless us and sanctify us, and His grace will cover us over and over, again and again. 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. God's commandments were given to the world through Moses, and it was and is impossible for human beings to obey God's law perfectly. So God himself was born as Jesus Christ, giving us the real truth and giving us undeserved favor if we believe on him. 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Not even one human being has seen God in his full glory in the supernatural realm. He is in a different dimension. Jesus Christ, who was born of God's Spirit, He has declared, which means Jesus Christ will lead us and show us the way to see God in His full glory. God didn't have to be born of a woman. He didn't have to be beaten and killed. But He did it for us, to lead us back to Him because he loves us. He knows the way because that's where he came from. So we can trust him and follow him and love him. 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? The word record is witness. John the Baptist was the witness that God was walking among us. The religious leaders came from Jerusalem because John was baptizing thousands of people. John had a different message than the mainstream church. These religious leaders wanted to know, Who art thou? Or to say, Who do you think you are? Only ordained peoples can teach God's word. 20. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. John the Baptist told us plainly, he was not the Messiah. The Jews were waiting for their Messiah. They are still waiting for their Messiah. They rejected John's witness they rejected Jesus Christ. Their Messiah will be Satan when he appears as Antichrist. 21. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? 
And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. They knew God's word. They just didn't obey it. They knew God's word said that Elijah will be coming back to this earth before the true Messiah. John told them plainly that he was not Elijah. Elijah was taken by a supernatural vehicle into the supernatural dimension. Elijah will return to this earth before Jesus Christ comes back. Do you know God's word? Do you obey it? 22. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? These religious leaders were giving John a pretty hard time. They didn't believe his message. They wanted to know, Who do you think you are? Preaching and teaching and baptizing people out here in the country. You're supposed to be doing all this in a church building. Where did you get your certificate saying that you can teach God's word, John? And you can see religion will always get in the way of reality. 23. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah. John answered them by quoting God's word. We can always count on God's word being the best answer to any question. John was quoting the prophet Isaiah. John was saying, the Lord is walking among us, but they would not listen or believe. 24. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. These religious leaders, they teach man's word. They follow traditions and they serve religious rituals. They do not teach God's word. 25. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptize thou then, if thou be not that Christ, or Elias, neither that prophet? They wanted to know, Why are you doing all this if you are just a regular guy? You're going against the mainstream grain here, John. We have a certain set of rules and traditions that you are breaking. And we see traditions of men making void the true word of God. 26. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. Baptism by water is the beginning of our following Christ. They didn't know him, but they should have known him. They should have known that he was among them, since they were so-called Bible teachers. They taught what the people wanted to hear, instead of what the people needed to hear. 27. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. John the Baptist was trying to tell the people that Christ was on his way, that Christ was already walking among them. They were not prepared for God's word to come to pass. They did not learn what God's letter truly said. Do you know what God's letter says? Have you read it? 28. These things were done in Beth Abara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Beth Abara means house of the ford. A ford is where the river is shallow. This is where John was baptizing. This is common sense. 
29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John knew that Jesus was God. John was a student of God's word. Jesus was the Lamb to be sacrificed once and for all, providing salvation for all those who would believe on Him. This Lamb was provided by God, coming from God, and being God. He took upon Himself our mistakes and our failures. He placed them onto Himself, even though He did no wrong. And as He was being beaten, crucified, and killed, our mistakes and our failures died with Him. Without Jesus Christ, we will carry our own burdens. 30. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. John is not mixing words. He is telling the people around him plainly, This man right here is God in a human body. John is saying, he existed before me, even though John was older than Jesus. 31. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. John is saying, this is the whole reason I've been out here preaching and teaching and baptizing people in water so that the people who had ears to hear and eyes to see would listen to and recognize this man, Jesus Christ, as God in the flesh. 32. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. John witnessed with his own eyes the Spirit. This word is pneuma, where we get our word pneumatic. This means air, breath, wind. This phenomenon in the air was descending from heaven, meaning it was coming down from the sky. John was seeing this. Like a dove, he said, so it appeared to be flying, and it abode on Christ, meaning it stayed on him, it dwelled within him. This was a powerful and supernatural event that marked the beginning of Jesus Christ's ministry. This is why he is the Anointed One. 33. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. The same Spirit that sent John to this earth was the same Spirit that was in Jesus Christ. The word ghost is pneuma, meaning breath, wind, air, where we say spirit, because it is invisible. Jesus Christ is the only one that could give us God's spirit. 34. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. John seen this happen. John bear witness to this event. And John is testifying that Jesus Christ was born of God, because he was God. 35. Again the next day after John stood, and two of his disciples, these two disciples would be Andrew and John, not John the Baptist, John the disciple, the author of the gospel we are reading. 36. 
and looked upon Jesus as he walked. He saith, Behold the Lamb of God. John the Baptist fixed his gaze upon Jesus Christ as he was walking about and testified again that Jesus was to be sacrificed for us. 37. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. These men were students of God's word. They knew that John was preparing people for Christ to come. Now they will follow Christ. 38. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? These men were being curious. They began following Jesus. Jesus walked up to them and asked, What seek ye? The word seek meaning, what are you searching for? Or what do you desire? We can ask ourselves the same question. What are we searching for in this life? What is our main desire as we live our life day to day? What consumes our thoughts, our time, and our energy? Is it God? Is it His Word? Or is it our own selfish pleasures as we leave God out of the equation? They called Him Teacher, and He teaches us if we let him. 39. He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Jesus said to them, and he says the same to us, Come, follow, and you shall see. And they were able to see where he dwelled. The same is true for us. If we follow Christ, we shall see where he dwells now, in the supernatural realm. We will be with him. The tenth hour is 4 p.m. 40. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Andrew was one of these men. John is the other, as he doesn't mention any other disciple. 41. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Andrew went and found his brother Peter, and told him the news that they had found Christ. They found, meaning they were looking for the Christ. They were waiting for the Christ. For generation upon generation, people taught God's word that a prophet would prepare the way for the Christ. These men were students of God's word. They were prepared for this when it happened. Are you prepared? Do you know God's word? Or do you know what you have been taught by religion, traditions of men? Prepare yourself. 42. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. Andrew led his brother to Jesus. His name was Simon, but Christ called him Cephas, which means stone or rock. And the word for stone is Petros, which literally means Peter. Christ called him Peter. In Ezekiel 28 verse 2, Satan is called Tyrus. And the word Tyrus means rock. We have to be sure which rock 
we are building our life with. Either our rock is Jesus Christ or our rock is Satan. Either we accept and follow Jesus Christ or we will accept and follow Satan. 43. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. God specifically went to find Philip. He told Philip to follow him. He knew the soul that he had placed in this man Philip. He knew Philip before Philip was in his mother's womb, when Philip's spirit was in the supernatural world before this physical world. He knew Philip's nature. God knew for sure that he could count on this man. This shows Philip to be part of God's elect. 44. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. These men lived in the same city. They knew each other. They studied God's word together. They were prepared for this. 45. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael means the gift of God generally identified with Bartholomew. Philip found him and told him that they had found Christ. Philip said specifically that this Christ was Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, which indicates that the students of God's word at the time were paying enough attention to what was going on around them that the popular belief was that something special was going on with the son of Joseph. Do we pay enough attention to God's word to recognize what's going on around us? Or do we just allow ourselves to be carried away by the desires of the flesh and allow ourselves to be complacent in the traditions of religion? 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Philip told Nathanael, Come and see. Don't take my word for it. Take a look for yourself. And God says this to each and every one of us alive today. Don't take man's word for anything. Go and see for yourself. Just like listening to my voice right now. Don't take my word for anything. Put your face in God's word. Read it and study it for yourself and see if these things be true. Don't listen to this man or any other man. Listen to God's word as it speaks to you, as it testifies to the truth. 47. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. God knew the spirit he had placed inside of this man also. He knew that his character was good and honest. He knew Nathanael in the supernatural world before Nathanael was born in this physical world. Nathanael followed him before, and God knew Nathanael would follow him again. 48. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael wanted to know, From where do you know me? God knew him from before he was in his mother's womb. 
And why would Jesus bring up the fig tree? Because Nathaniel was under a fig tree. Fig leaf means the existence of something is entirely hidden. Jesus is telling him, you weren't hidden from me, Nathaniel. And this goes back all the way to Genesis 3, verse 7, when Adam and Eve thought they were hiding their dirty deed. Nothing is hidden from God. All what we have done and all what we have said will be answered for. 49. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Nathanael knew right away that Jesus Christ was God. His spirit recognized the Holy Spirit that created him. Do we recognize the Holy Spirit that created our soul? Do we listen to his words? Do we follow him? Do we obey the letter that he wrote to us? 50. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Nathaniel believed just by seeing and hearing Christ for the first time. Jesus knew the miracles he was about to perform, and he is telling Nathaniel, you haven't seen anything yet. Blessed more are we that have not seen Christ, yet we still believe. And this statement holds true for us today. We believe and we have seen the Lord do amazing things. Yet we shall see greater things than these during the last generation, in the end times, when Satan comes down as Antichrist and God's people are filled with God's spirit and God's power. We will walk in total victory and we will perform the miracles of Christ because he is in us. 51. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. To see heaven open means to be able to see into the supernatural realm. Very few human beings have seen into this dimension. Christ is talking about a dream that Jacob had in Genesis 28 verse 12 when Jacob seen a ladder set up between heaven and earth and he seen the supernatural beings ascending and descending on this ladder going between heaven and earth going back and forth between this physical dimension and the supernatural dimension Jesus is saying I am that ladder that connects heaven and earth. Pay attention 